Now that we have a service running in the background, updating the GPS coordinates in the database, we need a way to update the markers on the map with those locations. So in user list fragment, which is the fragment that's showing on the screen right now. So in user list fragment, we need to use the list of users and retrieve their GPS coordinates from the database every time interval. Uh, a good time interval to use would be four seconds since that's the time interval for when the GPS coordinates are gonna be updated in the database. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a runnable and a handler to make requests to the database and retrieve those GPS coordinates and then update the positions of the markers on the map. And since there's gonna be a lot of code that we're gonna be adding to user list fragment, I'll just open up user list fragment here, uh, I've created a gist to save time. So go to this URL right here, and what we're going to do is scroll down and inside the user list fragment.java section here, I'm going to copy everything. This is the code that's gonna be added to user list fragment. And like I said, there's quite a bit of it, so that's why I wanted to make a gist just to save time. So I'm gonna go down below the onCreateView method and I'm gonna paste in all that code. Now let's import all everything that we need here, just press, pressing Alt Enter on all these imports. What else do we got? Okay, just a handler. And there we go, so that's all of our imports. Uh, you'll notice right at the top of everything that I just added into the added into the to the class there's some variables I'm just going to cut those and I'm going to put those at the top of the file I'm going to put those right here and the constant is going to be put at the top where the constants are right there so let's talk about everything that I've, I've added the first is this constant it's a location update interval it's 3000 so that means three seconds is going to be used for the updates uh, we have a handler and we have a runnable those two things are going to be what actually um, are responsible for making the requests every three seconds. So if we scroll down, we're going to see a couple new methods. So first of all is start user locations runnable. This method is going to be responsible for actually starting the runnable. You can see I have handler.postdelayed and then you create a new runnable and inside the runnable we're calling the method retrieve user locations. Um, I'm calling post delayed on the handler right here once again inside the runnable because that way it's going to recursively call this every, uh, every interval. So you can see I'm passing the location update interval which is once again three seconds. So every three seconds this is going to recursively call this method in the background so that we keep retrieving those GPS coordinates. So now, now let's take a look at uh, retrieve user locations. Okay, so First you can see we are looping through all the cluster markers. So I'm lo looping through all the cluster markers that have been added to the map. And if you don't remember what this cluster markers array list is, we can scroll down and into the add map markers method and you can see down here every uh, marker, every uh, cluster item that's added to the cluster manager is also added in parallel to this cluster markers array list. Remember I said that I'm adding them to this array list to help keep track of them since the cluster manager doesn't have any any easy way to query all the items that have been added to it. So that's what we're doing up here. Now we're looping through that array list right here. Now inside the loop, we are using the user ID of the marker. So we're getting the user object that's attached to the marker and then using the user ID to query the user locations node in the database. So if you remember from Firebase, we have a user locations node. The key is the user ID and then inside here you can get the information for their GPS coordinates. So that's what this is doing right here. So we're calling get on the location reference, adding an oncomplete listener. And then inside here, if the task is successful, we can retrieve a user location object. So the user location object is this object right here in the database. We are retrieving that. Once we have the user location object, we need to update the location of the marker in the cluster marker. So uh, what I'm doing again is looping through the cluster markers, you're finding out which you if the user ID matches the user the one that was queried from the database uh, if it does then we are getting a latitude and longitude object so this is going to be the updated position because this is the one that was queried from the database and then we're going to call cluster markers get I so get the get the position of the marker in the cluster markers list and then call set position so intuitively you might think this is going to work but actually it's not because all we're doing is we're calling we're using the cluster markers list and updating the position but 
the thing that's actually being displayed on the map is the cluster in the cluster manager. So all the markers in the cluster manager are what are what's displayed in, in the map, not the cluster markers. The cluster markers is basically just a tool for us to figure uh, keep track of all the markers, an easy way to keep track of all the markers on the on the map. So that actually is not going to update the position. So we're going to need another method to kind of finish this off. So if we take another look at our gist here, uh, if you scroll to the top, there's another method here, uh, myclusterrenderer.java. So I'm going to copy this and we're going to put this inside the cluster renderer class. So if we go open the project view, go over to the myclusterrenderer class, and I'm going to paste this method just down at the bottom here. So this is the method that we're going to use to actually update the position of the marker on the map. Because remember, the cluster manager and the cluster manager renderer are what's responsible for actually putting those markers on the map, uh, putting their position, what they look like, all the, basically everything to do with the marker. So now we have a method to update it. So we can go m cluster manager renderer dot uh, set update marker, and then we can pass the, uh, the the marker. So m so that's going to be m cluster markers get and get i. So that's going to refer to the cluster marker that we uh, the one that we're looking at the one in question basically so that's actually gonna work that will move the marker around on the map now I'm going to run it and we can take a look I'll run it uh, I guess it doesn't really matter which phone which phone and to test what we're gonna do is I'm gonna run the app and uh, I'm gonna manually change some of the coordinates in the database and we're going to see oh actually you know what I forgot to uh, start the service we still need to start the service so scroll down to on resume and let's see here in on resume we're going to call uh, start user location runnable and we also need to remember to stop the runnable when the uh, activity is closed so inside of on destroy I'm going to go and call stop location updates so we have start location start user locations runnable in on resume and then on destroy says stop location updates and that's going to make sure that the runnable and the handler stop working in the background if the activity is closed. So now I'm going to run it and we'll take a look. I, as I was starting to say, we're going. what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the app and I'm going to change some coordinates in the database uh, manually and then we should see those icons move around instantly kind of as I change the coordinates. So that's what we are going to expect to see. Okay, so here we have the application running. I'm going to go into a chat room uh, go to user list fragment. So there we have a bunch of users. Whoops. Turn that off. So I'm just going to click one. So I'm just going to select one at random. Uh, so one. That user's name is one. So I just want to find that user in the database. I think it's at the bottom. Yeah, see. So there's that user one. So now what I expect to see if I zoom in on one here, if I change the GPS coordinates, I'll keep this. It's going to be hard because I, I need to keep this on screen. So uh, what I could do is change this so that you can see. I want I want to be able to see the phone as I change the latitude and longitude. So watch the position of this user. We expect to see it updated in the database instantly. So I'm just going to change this these coordinates just a little bit. I'm going to press update. And now we expect to see this one move. There we go. So there it moved. So that means that the service is working. It's constantly checking for the GPS updates. Once again, I'll change this just to some different numbers. See if it moves. So we're waiting. Um, there we go, it moved again. So what that means is the, the service is running in the background and every three seconds it's checking what all the user locations are for the users that are in the chat room. So basically the takeaway here is that it's working as we expect at this point. If you wanted to take this test to the next level, what you could do is install the app on two phones, uh, join the chat room on those two different accounts, and then you could go for a walk and make sure that you could see them moving away from each other or whatever. But anyway, in general, it is working as we expect. Next, we're going to work on expanding and contracting the map view. So we're going to put a button here so that the map view can extend to the full screen or contract down to half the screen.